Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, welcome to the video where I do my tier ranking of every character from season 4 of the 100. Well, every main character, there's usually always like some minor characters that I do leave out, I try and include as many as I can. So if there's any major ones that I've forgotten from season 4, please let me know down below in the comments and I'll add a little note to the comments and say what I would put them. But I think I've got all the main characters so far. I think I've got all the main characters of season 4, I went through a couple of times and checked. Went through my last video of series 3, got all the ones from there that are st still uh, alive at the beginning of season 4. And added a few in, like Gaia, uh, uh, Ilian, people like that. So let's jump into the ranking. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know down below in the comments what you thought of the video. And if you want to see me do the rest for season 5, 6 and 7, which I probably will do anyway. But it's nice to know that people are enjoying the videos anyway. And if you are new to my channel, my name is Scott. I do reaction videos to the 100 as well as some other shows. I've done every episode for the first four seasons. Doing it like that for some reason. <laughs> the first four seasons of the 100 and hopefully we start in season five very soon. Let's jump into the ranking. Okay, so here is my ranking of all of the characters of season four. As you'll see, my selections here on the side are characters that I love, characters that I like, characters that are just in the middle for me. I don't have like strong feelings one way or the other, or they do things that I love, they do things that I hate, and so they kind of equal out into the middle. It's quite complicated in my head. It's a complicated place to be. Uh, characters that I don't like and characters that I hate. So, first character on the list this season is Bellamy. Bellamy, season four. This is an interesting one because I know series three, I really had a lot of problems with Bellamy. I really didn't like the character and the path they took him down in series three. Series four, it definitely feels like he's tried to make a lot of amends for what he's done. He's apologised time and again. He's tried to do the right thing multiple times. Sometimes... I'm not sure how I feel about how you went about that. I believe, God, it's been so long since I've watched the whole, like, beginning of the season. I actually finished the season, like, two weeks ago. Um, I tried to give myself a bit of a break. But since I actually started the season, it was months ago. So, um, it is the thing, like, when they had to get the... Was it, like, a water tank from one place? But he actually ended up sacrificing that to save a couple of people. Whereas, if the plan had gone all the way, like they planned to, to seal up the Ark, actually put more lives at risk than it did save people, but I feel like all along he did try to do the right thing, he was the one that really tried to open the door to the bunker, which was great, because that was a whole storyline, which I'm sure I'll get into as we get to other characters down the line that I wasn't happy with, but I actually quite like Bellamy this season, and I like the fact that he definitely got to make amends with Octavia, I mean, there have been comments in the, set, in the video saying, does he deserve redemption, does he deserve forgiveness, should Octavia forgive him for Basically him playing a part in eventually Lincoln getting killed or at least supporting Pike. And I know that was last season, I'm trying to focus on this season in particular, but yeah, I liked the character. I mean, I'm, you know me, as soon as a pretty boy takes his shirt off, I'm like, oh, I don't care what you've done wrong. <laughs> uh, I quite like Bellamy this season, probably not my favourite. I'm hoping like season five onwards, he will become even stronger for me. Now that he's probably got his dark path, I hope, out of the way. We'll have to wait and see how life on the arc has affected him but yeah i do like him so yeah we're gonna put him in the light category for this season rowan rest in peace rowan one of our many casualties for season four uh, a character that i like i feel like other people liked him more than i did maybe because i don't know when i watch things sometimes i have to wait weeks between episodes it can be hard sometimes to get on board with certain characters as quickly as, say, if I binged a season. I just don't have the time to do that. But I did really like him. He was quite attractive with a little gruff voice. Um, did I always agree with how he went about things? No, but that's 100. That's the great thing about the show is every single character, love him or hate him, is going to have moments where you go, why are you doing this? You shouldn't be doing this. But that doesn't make you hate them any less. Uh, but Rowan, again, I liked the character. I know he's definitely a fan favourite for a lot of people. And there's no particular reason why he's not a favourite of mine. I just, I liked the character. Didn't love him as much as everybody else did. Was actually sad to see him go, though, because, as I've said in comments on the videos as well, like, if I was, wanted one person to walk out of that conclave, it would have been Octavia. So I'm fine with him dying in those circumstances. But also, I, I didn't expect him to die. I thought there was going to be some other way around it. So I was sad to see him go the way he did, getting, like, stabbed drowned and just left in a fountain with acid rain raining down you know it was really sad way for him to go i don't know my brain's a weird place to, to live in you know um uh, but yeah rowan i like the character good character miller this season i'm gonna put him on middle ground which 
I don't like because I've always liked Miller <laughs> when I remember that he exists. First couple of seasons, I was like, who's this guy? Who's this guy who keeps turning up? Season three, I started to really like him. This season, it's more just the fact that he's had nothing really to do. His boyfriend character disappeared. I presume he's dead somewhere. <laughs> and he's never been talked about. So he's not had a lot really going on this season. And then towards the end, he was like supporting Jaha and like arresting people in the bunker that was working against them. So I kind of went off him a little bit there. But I don't dislike the character at all. I actually think he's quite a nice guy. The stuff with his dad at the end was quite emotional. And again, he's sexy. But yeah, just this season, I think it's not that I don't like him. It's just they hasn't really had much to do compared to last season. I can hopefully season five he will have more to do because we've got less characters in the world alive, minus whoever the hell was on that ship that appeared. Uh, but because there's going to be less people alive, hopefully we're going to have more actual time to know more about Miller. Maybe he's going to get a new romance. That'll be nice to see. Uh, in Mori, in Mori, okay, in Mori's a complicated one. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to have a different opinion to a lot of people again on this one. To me, I'm going to put her in the dislike category. I just don't particularly like the character. It's not that she's done anything like that egregious that I don't want to like her. I don't get on board with her. I just don't really care about her. I don't really know why that is. Maybe that's more she should go in the middle ground then. But then I feel like I like Miller more than I like Amori. I'm going to leave her there for now. And then I'll reassess at the end like I always do. Um, I understand some of her mindset when she thought they were going to sacrifice her. Do I feel like she went from 0 to 100 really fast? Yes. And she basically sacrificed that guy. <laughs> that innocence the wrong term to use. That guy who wasn't what they thought he was. And they put him in that chamber because they thought he'd attacked her and he hadn't. Uh, not cool, but I get, again, why she did what she did. And I like the fact that Murphy's got a significant other, someone who supports him, someone who loves him, and I like that he, she kind of grounds him a bit. But as the character herself, I just don't really, like... I just don't care about her at all. And I don't know why I don't get on board with her, because initially I did. But I guess it's because she's always kind of, like... On the most part, anyway a bit of an outsider, and uh, I don't know, because I know towards the end she started to become more of part of the group. I don't know, after have at the end, but more to me, it's just not somebody that I really care about. If she died, I wouldn't be care I wouldn't care about it. Like, I feel really bad saying that, because I'm sure there's people that love her, but to me, I'm just not a huge fan of the character. Do you know what, I'm actually going to change my mind. I'm going to put her in the middle, because it's not that I don't like her, it's just that I don't care about her. And that's why she got off all in the middle of ground. She's done nothing really to really piss me off this season. So, yeah, I'm going to put her in the middle. I'm going to be fair about it. Especially because I look forward as well to the next one who... Is, it, is his name Riley? I was going to Ripley in the head. But I think he's called Riley. I don't like this guy. Again, he's not been in it a lot. He got killed off this season. He was introduced this season and killed off this season. But I just didn't like his attitude. He kind of thinks his attitude stunk a little bit. And he was involved in that plot where he went to assassinate... Rowan, and it was just like, but I think, again, it's hard because with this show, I understand why sometimes they're doing what they're doing, but it doesn't mean I like it, and rarely, I just never liked his character, I had quite, dis every time he was on screen, I was like, Ugh, it's him again, because he was never given a storyline for us to really root for him, you know, and like, I didn't care <laughs> about him all that much, um, yeah, I didn't really like the character, I don't have a lot to say, just dislike Harper. Yeah, I like the character. I really like her. I think she's quite a fun character. Fun's a really weird term to use. I don't know why I use that because, especially towards the end of the season, her character took quite a, a dark turn. But I like her and Monty's relationship. I think they're very cute together and how they support each other and how their relationship really is what saved her life towards the end. And it's hard to watch someone who we've always seen as quite a good team player, quite a positive person, towards the end of the season kind of go, I'm done. I've had enough. And just that she didn't want to play anymore. She didn't want to fight anymore. She was kind of done fighting. And it was so it was hard to watch because obviously there was Jasper as a part of that, but we'll get to that when we get to Jasper. But she was someone who was has been quite positive throughout and actually last season she started this new relationship with Monty. And then to see how quickly she went from fighting to I'm just done was hard to watch, but I like it and I care for her and 
even when she said to Walter, like, I don't love you, like, go, you could tell it was from a, a place of, I'm trying to protect you, I want you to go so you don't stay and die as well, I want you to kind of move on and, and live, but I do love you, and that was hard, but luckily his love, their love, pulled her through, and she's come out of the bunker, and now she's in space with everybody. I really like Harper, and I hope that we get to see more of her, get to know more about her next season. Jaha. I don't like Jaha at all. Do I hate him? This is a weird one, because the category is normally reserved for, like, Pike or Cage, people that I really was so angry with, to the point of rage, but I guess Jaha, to some degree, was a big part of that. Again, especially towards the end, because that's what's most fresh in my mind. He hasn't really been punished, really, for being a huge part of the Ali situation. Yes, Sky Crew all got kind of lumped together as, you caused all these deaths. Uh, Jaha was the one that kick-started all of that. Obviously, it's a difficult one because, I don't want to go into this too much because it was last season, but I don't think he realised what was going to happen when he took that first chip. So is it... It's hard to fully punish him for his part in it because I felt like he generally took that chip because he generally felt like it was the right thing for Salvation, City of Light, blah, blah, blah. So to then punish him for that, well, then everybody should be punished for taking the chip, you know, because they always thought it was a good thing to do. But whatever. This season, it just infuriated me the more and more I watched him and how, again, I understood elements of what he was trying to say, what he was trying to do. He wanted to protect his own people. I know that. But God, he was a little shit, a little sly little dog most of the way throughout and really did somehow weasel his way back into power, and I don't know how. To this day, I watch a whole of season four now, I don't know why is he in charge. Like they never held a vote to put him in charge again. They never uh, decided that he should be the one to make all the big decisions. It was mostly Clark that was doing that. But yeah, somehow he was in charge again, and then making them shut the door on everybody else outside the bunker. And I would have maybe understood it more if... They just shut Sky Crew in the bunker, but that included Kane, you know, Octavia, all of their own people. But they shut that door, leaving a big chunk of their own crew out to die. What a dick move, especially because Clark, which we'll get onto, wasn't okay with doing that initially. She wanted to share it. Then he managed to make her change her mind, but then she changed her mind again because she realised that wasn't the right way to do it. And even he was willing to go, if it wasn't for Kane, and launch an all-out attack on the grounders and everybody else in the bunker. Take the hundred people that they've got, or well, it was more than a hundred, the few hundred people they've got, launch an attack on the other, what, eleven hundred people in there to try and make sure that they die, or most of them die, but we survive. What a dick move. And yes, he did see his senses towards the end, but I don't want to spend more time with him. <laughs> I just don't. I mean, he might have a redemption arc through season five. I don't know. I just don't really care. I don't want to see him. I still think, and I'll say it till I'm blue in the face, that his character should have ended at the end of season one. He was a dick in most of season one, but right at the end, he made a really heroic move to sacrifice himself, send the arc down to earth, and he stays and just like the releases, whatever it was. That should have been it. He should have died. And because everything after that is just come worse and worse from some of his moves in season two to the alley stuff to him being a complete arse this season and I just I don't know how I'm alone in that I know some Patreon comments have said yeah Jaha's a dick and I'm done with him as well but I don't know what the general consensus is but I dislike the guy Ilian Ilian I'm gonna put him in the I think the like category but very much the lower like again I am swayed by a pretty face Guilty. <laughs> I know I am. Um, I didn't like him at the beginning at all. I felt like he was quite frustrating to watch, especially when he burned down the arc because of the chip stuff. I feel like a lot of that is... And something Grounders don't really fully understand technology, and so like he had to get revenge for his mother because of the Becca stuff, or the Ali stuff. And this is where... Like, Storyline's confusing as someone who understands that they're not to blame, although the ones that were chipped should get that because they experienced Becca... And I still feel like they were really harsh to the Sky Crew because they were in the same situation as the Grounders were. But the Grounders and everybody all tried to get Sky Crew for it. But whatever. Um, Burning on the Ark was a dick move. But again, the, the Ark people, the Arcadians had some... Sky Crew had a lot to blame there as well because they just let him wander the place aimlessly. Like, who's this random Grounder? They're just wandering. But after he did that, I feel like he did realise that what he did was wrong. And 
made a really good relationship with Octavia, and that was actually quite nice to see, even though he's not a patch on Lincoln. I did like that they kind of grounded each other. He helped her through like the suicidal thoughts she had, some of the grief she had. She helped him kind of realise his error of his ways and how he should be acting, and he get went, stepped up, took part in the the uh, the conclave, got an arrow through the neck by Echo, but then obviously Octavia killed him. Uh, but he did step up, and even though he's not a major fighter, he did go and do the right thing. And whilst I don't like a lot of his actions, I actually found him quite an interesting character. I'm not overly sad that he's gone. I don't know how much use he would have in the future. I liked him for what he was. His good arc from being a dick, making some bad decisions, redemption, he's been killed off. That was a nice round arc for him. Uh, but yeah, I do like the character of Iliad. Echo is a complicated one. I... T- I'm going to put her in the middle for now. That's my instinct reaction is, I like her, I don't like her, I like her, I don't like her, I like her, I don't like her, so it goes in the middle. Like, the character is interesting, for sure. But there are times where I'm just like, I wish she'd die. <laughs> From the fight with Octavia, where she ended up stabbing Octavia, whether she wants to kill her or not, or just to capture her, whatever. You know, she did stab Octavia, bung her off a cliff, right? Not cool, no one touches my, my girl Octavia at all. And then when it was the the, uh, the conclave, everyone was trying to fight fair. She tried to tip the scales in favour of their group. And even Rowan stood up to her and was just like, you're banished, what the hell are you doing? Don't do this, this is not fair, this is not the way. And it wasn't cool, like, all grounds are about honour, even like Ice Nation. It's all about honour, and doing things, following the rules, doing it the right way. That's why they didn't like how Clark became the new Nightblood, because it didn't fit with their traditions and their honours. And she tried to tip the scales in their favour so that they could win and survive in the bunker. So it was right that she got punished and kicked out, and I liked that even Octavia stood up, stuck up, stuck with that as well, because it was a dick move, and I didn't like it for it. Is she an interesting character? Yeah. And I liked her little bits towards the end, when she actually did save some of the Sky Crew, help them get to the bunker, and is one of the people on the Ark now with them. But as a character, like, if she died in, say, the Conclave episode or towards the radiation at the end, would I have cared? Honestly, no. Whilst I like her, I don't have that attachment to her. And again, I feel like a bit of a dick saying that. I, feel, I think it's one of these characters that I'm going to appreciate more in a rewatch, for sure. Like, once I see her, obviously, in the cage at Mount Weather, I really understand the importance of her character throughout the next few seasons. And obviously... I'm just, I don't know how long she lasts, whether she lasts the next three seasons or what. But I feel like a character's going to be someone that I appreciate more throughout once I do a rewatch because I'll see her more in Series 2. I know she was in bits of Series 3, but I definitely feel like my ranking this season is going to be controversial. I will have a lot of different opinions for a lot of people, but yeah, in the middle at the moment, Echo. Luna. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put I like her. I like her Will. Her determination, and she came because she was dying. She offered to help out, but they were kind of just using her and using her, taking more blood, more blood. And I like the fact that she stood up to them. Was just like, no, like I'm not helping anymore. Obviously, then they captured her and forced her into it. But I liked that, and I liked the fact that when she went into the conclave, she was like, if I win, no one's getting the bunker. We're done. We keep destroying each other. Let's just die. And whilst I don't agree with it, it was quite a, a ballsy move on her part. And I thought it was nice to have someone that's got a different point of view. It's just like, me and my people. And the the Conclave episode, whether you liked it or not, or agreed with its outcome or not, it showed that she is a badass warrior. She's a badass fighter. And they've said that a few times, like she walked away from the Conclave in the past because she knew she would win. And she managed to kill off Rowan, who's a strong-ass character. She really managed to bump him off. And in quite a brutal fashion as well. Um, yeah, Octavia ended up taking her down, tricking her into that wardrobe, and Octavia's behind her. I like Luna as a character. I wish we got to see more of her, but I'm also glad that she died in some ways, because I liked that Conclave episode. It was so brave of the show to kill off three big characters. And so it was. I liked that she died in the episode, because it was so shocking in some ways. But yeah, uh, uh, Luna, I like her. Monty, do I even need to talk about Monty? Monty's MVP. <laughs> I do get comments every now and again on my tears from older seasons where people are like, I love that Monty's always at the top of people's rankings. Yeah, I love Monty. Even if he wasn't like prominent in every episode this season, I just really like him. From him being like, okay, that his name's not on the list, even though someone did point out 
he grew what he like grew with the engineers or on the farm station or something. He had some past where really he should have been one of the chosen hundred because he has some technical knowledge that would have helped him survive the Ark. He was just like, yeah, cool, like I understand, it's fine because he's such a good person. And even when his friends and his girlfriend were trying to stay and kill themselves, he stayed to the last moment to try and convince them all the time, try and help them and do the right thing. And at the end, when he took his suit glove off to put his hand through. I'm scared for where that goes next season and the consequences of his actions. But it just showed that Monty is a kind, caring person who always has other people's best interests at heart. He's the MVP. He's one of my favourite characters. I love him. I want to marry him. Because <laughs> he's so sweet. And I love his Lego hair. And like how he wants the best for everybody else. I want the best for him. And I just I just love him. Even if it, I know some people that make any sense why I don't love Bonnie so much. I just have done ever since season one. There was something I think it was a relationship with Jasper and I mean, he was always the one trying to like keep people on the straight and narrow. He was always like the, the heart of the group. Monty, oh, chest kiss. Jasper Jasper's a really complicated one. I don't dislike the character this season. Oh, hello. I don't dislike him. I don't hate him. I don't dislike him. I don't love him. It's one of these two. I'm going to put him here for now with a like category. Oh, I don't know. I really don't know Jasper because I don't want anyone to feel the way he felt this season. I said that from episode one when he tried to kill himself and someone interrupted him. I would never want people to feel like that way. I don't want people to feel like they want to die and... And whatnot. And so his ending was sad. He took his own life. He was going to stay and die anyway. And took his own life. And that was sad. Where I had issues with it. Like for me. Was. When he was. Saying right. Well we've got six months left to live. I'll just stay. And not kill myself. He then kind of became. More of a help, hindrance than a help. Like he was getting drunk. And starting parties. Some of it was needed. Bear in mind. Because people knew they were going to die. But there were things he was doing. Which I felt like it was actively working against the group, like they're all trying to seal up the Ark or come up with this plan, sort of this plan, and he just wanders off, and Bellamy, who's quite an important person to the group, wanders off to try and help him, it's like, well, just, just leave him, like, it's, it's like, why waste your time with him, he doesn't want help, and I don't mean that in like a dick way, I don't mean like, no, he's, he's suicidal, so we can leave him to it, but I mean like, you can't help someone that doesn't want help, you can offer help, if they don't take it, that's fine, and so there were times when it was like, Jasper, just stop being a dick, yes, I feel like he definitely played a part in, the mass suicide, he was, it's, I think it's his idea, because Riley killed himself by accident, and so Jasper's like, oh, let's all do a mass suicide, and I didn't like that, because whilst I get like, <sighs> I said it at the time, there's a romanticised version of, let's all wait here to die with a death wave, obviously people start getting sick, and that romance idea of we're all just going to die, hand, holding hands, whatever, very quickly turned from what seemed like a good idea to quite a scary thought, Again, even like with the mass suicide, it's good in some ways that the control is in your hands. If that's how you want to die, that's your choice of an adult. And so I'm fine with a lot of their decisions. But there was a middle portion where I was like, Jasper, just stop being a douche about stuff. Like, there's like people around you that want to live. And he wasn't actively helping them, you know? Like, if, if it's fine. Like, if I want to die, that's fine. I need to go do that. Or if I was going to be like, right, well, I'm going to die in six months' time. In the meantime, he's got friends around him that he cares about, surely, that he would want to help them survive. And so, like, I'm going to put him in the middle for now because I'm really conflicted about Jasper. Like, I will appreciate his storyline a lot more on a rewatch, knowing how his mental health is, how his storyline ends. I don't didn't want his storyline to end like that. I really, really, really wanted Jasper to find a way to break through that wall of his mental health and to try and give him hope and for something to give him hope so that he could become like a good character over the next few seasons and have like a really heroic end to the show whenever that would be I didn't want it to end the way it did and it was sad that it ended the way it did and it, I guess it is important to show that sometimes you can't save everybody sometimes people don't want to be saved and they will do take things into their own hands but yeah I'm conflicted with uh, with Jasper <laughs> Abby, 
Right, controversially, <laughs> I like the character. I know for a fact, I've not got a lot to say about her, because I know a lot of people don't like her. She's no one's favourite character. I think a lot of people could kind of just give or take her. I quite like her, on the most part. Like, I'm not in like, a, oh my god, I love Abby. But like, every now and again, she has these really cool moments, like when she uh, injected Jaha and stopped him. And, you know, she went down like, quite a dark path in Mount, in Mount Weather, like, like Mount Weather, woo, in the laboratory. Uh, I didn't agree with her selection of the the capsule thing, but I think a lot of that was the brain damage, showing her things, making her think Clark was going to die, and obviously she's going through a lot of the same stuff that Raven was going through, which is now sorted. Um, I don't have rhyme or reason for why I put Abby in the light category. Again, I reassess at the end, because do I want to put her in the same category as Bellamy? Probably not, but does that mean Bellamy goes up? Abby goes down? I don't know. I just quite like her, but not, like, if she died, I'd be sad, but I don't think I would miss her a lot, but I do like the character. It's a weird, my brain just is a really bad at making decisions, so. Murphy, I love Murphy. <laughs> He's one of my favourite characters, I'm not just going to really fancy him. The more I watch him, the more I fancy him, I don't know what it is about him. I really don't. Because he does make dick decisions, like really selfish decisions at times, but it is to survive. He is a survivor, and... I, there were some really nice moments with Murphy this season, particularly with Murphy and Raven. And I liked, I liked when he gave the medicine to the child, that was a nice moment. And I liked that he was there when Raven looked like she was about to go and do a suicidal spacewalk. He was there to apologise to her for what he did to her leg and to, you know, to be there for her in the moment but just give her some nice closure on that. And then he was there at the end as well when they went to save Raven and got to the Ark together and... I don't feel like Murphy had a lot of big things to do this season. If he has, I've forgotten about them. He had some nice moments with Amori, nice moments with Raven, nice moments with that kid. And was it Luna that spoke to him in, in the laboratory? And I chat with him about how he's a survivor. I think it was Luna. Or was it Abby? It was one of the two. Again, that was a nice moment as well. And again, I think Murphy's just one of those characters that I'm just going to really enjoy his storyline, regardless of the fact that I fancy the guy. Because I think he's a very, very interesting character. Because he has that heart, but he does not have to survive it. He will put himself in Imori first, but will do what he can to help other people along the way. And even though he's like, I'm, I'm this tough guy, and doesn't like to show that he cares, he definitely does care. And I just really like Murphy. I'm going to skip forward to a couple just because I feel like I'm talking a lot about each character, so I want to get a couple quick ones out of the way. Uh, ben slash Dr. Eric Jackson. I'm going to go in the middle. Yeah, I go, yay, Ben, every time he comes on screen. But it's just because he's cute. As a character, he didn't really do much of anything this season. Uh, I don't dislike him. I don't love him. He was just kind of there. Solid background character. But again, he's one of the characters that I want to see more of going forward next season. Nyla, again, middle ground. I don't dislike the character. But I don't like her particularly. She's just kind of there. She has this relationship with Clark, which is in the background doesn't really have much of an impact. I don't think she got one of the Sky Crew spot. I felt like it was quite unfair to some of the Sky Crew that really could d deserve that spot. She sh she got that spot. I don't think that was right. But again, I like the character. Ish. She's just kind of there. And Gaia, I quite like Gaia. Again, not having a lot of impact on the season. Again, I'm hoping she's in it more series five. But I did like what I saw. I felt like she was quite badass. And I only just realised recently that she's in Chilling Adventures of Sabrina's Prudence. And she's in season three of You as uh, Marianne. And I never put all the pieces together that was the same actress. I love it. And she's a good actress. And I really like her relationship with Indra. Oh, she's quite a strong character. And I like her. Let's we'll see more about her in the future. Now here's the ones I've got probably got more to say about. Clark. 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 My baby Clark. 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 Clark for me. Again, it's going to go with the like category. Because I can't put her any higher. She did a few things this season which I didn't like. On the most part, I actually agree with a lot of her decisions. For example, making the list. I thought was the right way to do it. A lottery sounds fair. And it, it, fair it probably is the more fair approach. But is it the right way to survive? Probably not. Because you could have 100 people that are all on death's door or ancient or... You know, bad health, can't bear children. So whilst, yeah, a whole lottery is the fair approach, in terms of the survival of humanity, having the lottery isn't right because that isn't going to be the right way to move forward. So I agreed with her actions there. And quite a lot of actions throughout I agreed with. Where she really did start to knock down off the spots, high spot for me is because 
with the bunker. She was all for making a deal with Rowan, we all get X amount, or was it 50-50% with Rowan. And she was all for fair, fairness and, and doing it fairly. And I think she was, she was she part of the decisions when they said 100 each? Was that part of Clark? Because their plans change so often this season. Like every episode, things change. Like new plan, new plan, new plan. Let's have this many people in the bunker. Let's have this many people. Let's share with this. Let's take it for ourselves. It's hard to keep track of who said what or when. <laughs> um, but she's all for fairness. And whilst I have issues with her at times, she does put her life on the line a lot. And she is very fair. But then she was also with Jaha in shutting the door to the bunker. I was like, we're doing what's right for the like smile of humanity. I'm like, but that's not what you you would normally do. You've let Jaha get in your head. Clark, what the fuck are you doing? Because your mum's telling you it's wrong. Bellamy telling you it's wrong. And yes, yeah, she did let Bellamy open the door eventually. But she did pull a gun on him. I mean, Jesus, that's going a bit far. Because his sister was out there. Her friends were out there. Raven was out there. Kane was out there. And she felt it was fine to pull a gun on someone that wanted to get them back in. And do the right thing. Uh, I know that was, like, the writers making that decision for her, obviously, but I didn't like it. Uh, other than that, I actually quite liked Clark this season. Um, yeah, I knew she would survive, because I know she's in it till that, the end of the end of the show, I believe. Uh, but again, she, what, like I say, whilst I do have issues, she does put her life on the line, and the finale proved that. She stayed with seemingly no hope to survive, because the Nightblood solution didn't seem to be working, and she climbed up that tower... She was burning away, she ran back, and she basically said, I'm going to stay and I'm going to die, but I'm going to make sure that you guys get to the Ark, get in safely. And so she, in essence, sacrificed her own life. Now, she survived, and we obviously saw the flash forward where she's there five years later with a new short hairdo. <laughs> but yeah, so I think for me, Clark's character that I like, but not my top, top tier. But again, this might move towards the end. Indra, top tier Indra, I love Indra. <laughs> Again, I feel like there's a few episodes in this season that she wasn't in. Maybe she wasn't available for as much this season, whether they didn't want the character in as much. But the one she's in, God, she makes an impact. And her and Octavia's relationship is one of my favourite things on this show. And also, her relationship that's growing with Kane. I'm excited to see more of that, hopefully, in the future. Because they're both in the bunker together. Kane's in the bunker, right? Yeah. Yeah, Kane's in the bunker. I just love how she supports Octavia and how she's like a mother figure, but also like a mentor. And she's more of a mother probably to Octavia than she was to Gaia. But that's because she didn't agree with Gaia's path in life. But there's just something about the way she holds herself. The way she talks. Her actions. I always love her. Like when they went to wherever Indra was. And she was like, no, I'm not going to work with you. You sided with the Ice Station over me. I'm like, yes, Indra. I'd be pissed off too. They were mates with you. They were like working with you. And then they just fucked you over. And obviously now that they went back on it, it all turned out alright. But... I just like how she's always like that solid, she's a warrior that will fight, but she's very good at being the second in command and lifting up the people that are in charge. Like, Octavia's wavers quite a lot at times and struggles with the responsibility. Indra's always one of the people that's there to hold her up and go, you can do this. Even though she's older and she's the mentor figure, she also realises and sees in Octavia the, the strength that she has and is the one person that will constantly be by her side and is like, you can do this. And I love her for that. Indra for me, Top tier, love the bitch. Raven, another top tier character. I mean, I think Raven's been top tier maybe every season, except maybe one, maybe series two. Did she go down a bit in series two? I can't remember. But I really loved this season. I felt so, I felt so sorry for her because she was really struggling with the leg problems and then realising that she had the brain trauma and that she wasn't going to be able to survive it. And so it was basically finding a way to go up and die in space doing the one thing she's wanted to do for ages now, for like most of her life, which is the spacewalk, which is obviously what, what has got her into the trouble in the first place. And I felt really bad for the character because she's so smart and so genius and the the visions of Becky appearing to her, the visions of Sinclair appearing to her, obviously were just her. It was nothing to do with the chips that were there. It was like her own brain. Yeah, well, there was residual Ali, Becca stuff, whatever. But there were her voices in her own head showing her the way to survive. And she, again, she put her life on the line by killing herself, literally killing herself in that ice bucket and then zapping herself with the things, killing herself like twice. She flatlined. And she got them all up to the arc. She's just a solid, ever-reliable, genius character that always comes up with solutions. And it was even this season as well when 
they were struggling to make decisions at the arc, and she was like putting her foot down, like you've got to make the decisions, make the list, do this, do that. She was like more of a leader at times than Clark was, but Clark was the actual leader, leader. So she was like in the background, kind of like telling her what to do, and it showed that like Rafe has that leadership quality, and I just love her brain and how she thinks, and how she's always like maybe not always one step ahead, but she's always got a solution, always comes up with a magical way to solve the problem because. She's that good. And I just love love the character. Kane, I'm going to put in the like category again, I believe. I feel like there's a lot of characters that are just... That I like, that I really like, but not in the top. Again, Kane this season was a really solid, good character. Always seemed like he was trying to do the right thing. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm sure you'll let me know down below. If I've forgotten any times where he made decisions this season which were really bad. I feel like he always seems to have the fair approach at heart. And wanted to do the right thing and he was one of the people that was left outside the bunker when they shut the door. I can give or take his relationship with Abby. I don't really care about it too much. It's like it's in it now and again enough for it to be present but it's not focused on enough for me to really care. <laughs> Although I suppose you could argue the decision at the end of the season when he chose to go against Abby's wishes to keep her in the bunker, was done through love because he loved her, and realistically they need Abby there because she is the doctor, and she's really good at medical knowledge, but it wasn't what she wanted, so it's quite complicated as well. But I can't remember any, off the top of my head, any times that I didn't like him this season, again remind me if that isn't the case, if I did hate him at some point, <laughs> but yeah, he, see, he was doing the right thing, he's the one that convinced Jaha not to fight against the grounders, he was part of the 100 decision making, and he felt like a really solid character this season. I can't remember a lot of what he did. Maybe that's a good thing. I would trust him to make some really important decisions. Especially more the bloody Jaha. But yeah, Kane, Good character. Octavia, again. Do I need to even say anything? Right at the top. Number one spot. Move up a bad team. No, not that. <laughs> not that it matters. Uh, Octavia. Mwah, my queen. My idol. My hero. I love her. And it's really interesting to me, actually. And there was comments, I think, towards this season, or was it the end of Series 3, where some people said, a lot of people don't like Octavia's arc moving forward. I don't know if that meant Season 4 or after this. And some people go off her, and they don't agree with her, her plot lines, her story arc. I loved it. I thought it was great. Yes, the assassin stuff was a little dark, which was like, she killed that guy with like the thing through the ear. But it was all because they were trying to like take down the king. So I kind of understood it. Uh, where I really started to fall even more in love with the characters. Can I fall any more in love with Octavia? I don't think so. It was just everything kind of after she was stabbed. So when she was struggling, she wanted to kill Ilian, but she decided not to. And their relationship where he helped her like not commit suicide, her breaking through those emotions, her role in that conclave. She came out victorious. And even though she only killed, what, one person? She killed... Well, she officially killed uh, Elian, but he's going to die anyway. But she killed Luna, a big badass warrior herself. You know, she survived. That's the best way to survive, I would say. It's hard until most people are taking themselves out. And you go in at the end and you take out the last remaining person. Smart way to do it. I love her. I love the fact that she's in charge of the bunker. And I like the fact that she's not confident about it. I like the fact that she's not just like, I'm in charge now. I won the conclave. Do as I say. She is very much like... I don't know if I can do this, but I am going to try. And she's got, like, Kane and Indra supporting her and other people there. And she's got to step up and be a leader because she's a great person. And she made the great decision to share the bunker because that's the right way to do it. It's the like, arguably the fairest way forward. Not one clan gets it. We all get it. We all become, rather than 13 clans, we become one big new clan. Obviously, that might change <laughs> over the five years. I don't know. And with the new people coming, probably Series 5. But I just love her. I think she's very smart, capable. I want her on my side. I love her so much. And I totally understand pretty much all the decisions she made this season. I could see people maybe having a problem with her relationship with Ilian. I don't know because as I'm recording this, it's not been touched on a lot on the YouTube com uh, videos yet because of how far ahead I am. But... I liked it for what it was. It was what she needed. She needed to get some of her frustrations out with a hunky man. <laughs> and she did that. And it was what it was. It was never a long-term thing. It was just what she needed at the time. What he needed at the time. And had a nice ending when she helped end his suffering. I love Octavia. Blah, 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 blah. Top character of the show. 
Right, now before you all start leaving the hate comments and uh, angry comments about why people aren't certain places, let's go through it again very quickly and just see if I want to move anybody around. So top tier, characters that I love and are passionate about, Octavia, Monty, Murphy, Indra, and Raven. They are my top five, the fantastic five. I love them. I think they're amazing characters. So excited to see where they go next season. But I'm always like nervous because I love them so much that I've been nervous that it's going to go down a route that they're going to go lower down, but hopefully not. We'll see. So characters that I like but aren't top tier. Bellamy. Bellamy, yeah, he's not top tier for me this season. Like, I liked him. I really like him. And I really fancy the hell out of him. Like, crikey, that's a good looking man, for sure. But I feel like next season, when there's a bit more, maybe like a new storyline rather than, well, let's try to survive the end of the world. Maybe when there's like a new threat, something new, I don't know. I feel like he could definitely go up. But it's not like I, I don't want people to be like, oh, why have you not put Bellamy at the top? I don't dislike him at all. I actually really like his character this season. Um, I just, there's people I prefer more than him. Rowan, yeah, like the character, good guy. Harper's good. Ilian, yeah, I liked him. Uh, he might go down a, a level, maybe, because I was like very hit or miss with him. But I did like the character in the end. I don't want to put him in the same sort of category as. Uh, Bellamy so yeah I'm going to move him down Ilian like good character but like I can, I can give or take him but he had a good arc Luna I like the character Abby <laughs> controversial I quite like Gara like Clark's good character Kane's good character Middle Ground again to clarify because sometimes people get confused it's not that I have no opinion on them it's just that I don't either I don't love them or hate them I'm kind of like in the middle because I can't decide or they are just neutral, or they were in the season enough for me to really, really care. Miller, yeah, wasn't in it a lot to really have an impact, but nice enough guy. Ibori, I have problems with, but I like elements of her character. Uh, but I don't dislike her, so she's going to go in the middle. Echo, Echo's a complicated one, because I feel like if it wasn't for the final episode, two episodes, I definitely would have had her in the, the lower category. After the conclave, she tried to fix that a little bit after she attacked and threw Octavia off a cliff I just didn't really like the character too much but she did step up towards the end and in a dying moment well, about to die moment but then she did survive in the end um, she uh, did the right things that bumped up into the middle Jasper I feel like I'm swayed by the fact that he had a sad ending but did I really like the character? Probably not really um, I've not really liked him much since early seasons I feel like I feel bad putting him in dislike because he was a suicidal guy. So I'm going, oh, I didn't like him. It was really mean. But yeah, I'm going to leave in the middle for now. But the middle ground is like a mixed bunch of different things are in the middle. Uh, ben slash Eric, <laughs> Nyla. I don't have an opinion really on her. Uh, Elliot, yeah. Didn't like Riley. Hey, Constant Jaha. But I feel like there should be more people here because like Echo would be quite a bit this season, and Maury would be a few times, J Jasper would be a few times. But I don't know. I'm gonna, I think we're gonna leave it as it is for now because these two are the standout characters that I just did not like and just didn't care for at all. Because even with characters like Jasper, I, like, I didn't agree with it, but I cared about the character at times. I wanted better for him. So that is the list as I'm gonna leave it for now. And that's it, that's my tier ranking of every main character from season 4 of the 100. Please let me know down below in the comments if you agree, disagree, most of the time it's disagree with me. I know my, con my opinion is quite controversial, and in this season in particular, there's a lot of good points and bad points about a lot of characters, so there's some that I'm still conflicted on, there's some that I still want to put higher or want to put lower, but then I think, oh, but I like that part, but oh, I don't like this part, so. But yeah, I'm really um, conflicted this season about how I feel about it. I might have to take another look, maybe. I don't know, because I feel like once I finish season seven, what I might do is do a tier list for all the characters, and at the minute, I try and do it by each season, so how do I feel about their action in season four? How do I feel about their action in season three? So, when I get to the end of season seven, I'm like, okay, how do I feel about Jasper as a whole? How do I feel about Jaha as a whole? I mean, his whole storyline. So I feel like that's going to be a very different sort of ranking, but yeah, I hope you understand at least some of my reasons, even if you don't agree with my choices um yeah i'm gonna have to think about it because that was quite a hard one to do i think i don't fully know if i'm comfortable with some of it but for now i'm gonna leave it as it is when i get to do the idea i might change my mind but we'll have to wait and say thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video as always my name is scott hope you guys are well take care and stay safe if you enjoyed the video leave some comments down below let me know what your thoughts are on the ranking and if you're excited for me to start series five I'll probably take a week off like i always do and then start series five 
the next week after that. So the next video will be up in two weeks' time, I think, depending on my schedule. I change my mind a lot. We'll see. <laughs> all right, thanks for watching. Take care. And I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Bye, guys. Stay safe and have a good evening.